and welcome to Behind the Scenes with me, Louise Howlett, where we'll be catching up with some of the members of the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra who have been unable to perform in front of an audience since the beginning of March. The orchestra is one of the busiest arts companies in the country, so we thought it'd be nice to give you a chance to meet the players that you know so well from the concert stage. Today we have Philip Martens, Deputy Concertmaster of the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra, joining me. Hello, Philip. Hello. <laughs> so it's straight in. Certainly, uh, it's been quite a shock when all the performance venues closed down at the beginning of March. Um, how have you found adapting to the lockdown time? Have you found ways to keep motivated? It was quite a big shock. Um, I do do lots of other things um, other than play the violin. So um, as soon as I was allowed to uh, go to the shops or, or buy uh, things and um, allowed to work, I did lots of other things such as building and I also um, maintain and service cars in my spare time. So as soon as we were allowed to do that after level five, um, I did that uh, amongst playing uh, just to stay fit for the upcoming um, recordings, which I knew were hopefully on the table. Yes, there's been a few, um digital performances that have taken place. How did you find that experience? Was it quite a different experience having no audience there? Well, yes, I mean, I've done lots of recordings before, but what I found um, interesting was that even though there wasn't an audience, um, we basically only had one run through. So when you do a normal recording, if there's a mistake, you can go back and do a rerun. Um, and this was kind of like a concert, but not a concert, and a recording, but without doing another take. So that I found very interesting. It's, a, it's certainly a new new part of how we are putting concerts together. It's quite interesting. So another con question that um, I've often heard people ask musicians that was very keen to know is, what inspired you to become an orchestral musician? What got you started on the violin, or um, what decide, made you decide to become an orchestral musician? Uh, well, as a lot of people know, my I come from a very musical family. Um, my uh, parents and my brother and sister play an instrument as well. And the, the funny story goes along with how I started the violin. My brother's 10 years older than me, plays the cello. My father plays the cello, so they were able to do duets. And my sister, Heidi, who's eight years older than me, also was a violinist. And my mom is a flautist. So basically, she was very upset that she could not play duets with anyone in the family. So she nagged my mom for a long time for a little brother or sister so that she was able to play duets with it. And then I came about. So that's kind of the story of how I uh, started on the violin. And I'm quite grateful that my sister wanted to play duets with someone. Yes, that's really, that's wonderful. Gosh, that's a wonderful story. And now there's a whole, um, the Martens clan, it's lovely to see actually, I mean, you and, and Peter's back in the orchestra and Suzanne playing so often. So um, it's got quite a family um, connection still there. So you're able to, do you play together very much as a, as a, as a family unit, even now? Um, well, yes, we do try to play together as often as possible. It's just a pity my sister is so far away in, in uh, Salzburg. Um, would love to play um, and incorporate her to play as well. Um, we did go visit her last year and did some playing, which was fantastic. My brother and I, both families went over to visit her. But yeah, playing together as often as we can, it's always nice to do that. That's true, that's true. And the last thing we wanted to ask people, we we're going to put together a bit of a playlist for the audience out there who don't have uh, concerts to go to at this time. Uh, we wondered what sort of music do you think would be nice to recommend? What's one of your favorite pieces that you could say um, for them to go and listen to, to add to their collection until they can get back to listening to the orchestra again? Um, yeah, I, I don't really have an absolute favorite uh, because there's so many uh, uh, wonderful pieces out there. Um, but one of my most favorites to play, probably because it was one of the first orchestra course pieces, and uh, everyone will know what orchestra course is um, here in Cape Town, it's lots of fun, um, is the Sassan's Organ Symphony. Um, I absolutely love that piece, especially when, it's, uh, when we play it in the City Hall with our fantastic organ. Um, and uh, also with my favorite conductor, Bernard Geller, it's always something special. So um, I'd recommend, if you haven't listened to it recently, go and listen to that. It's a fabulous piece. Wonderful. That's perfect. That's a great start to the, to the series of listening to music. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your day. I don't know if you've got any big uh, DIY products on the go at the moment. Um, so I hope that's, uh, that you can get back to going to that soon. 
And, um, and thanks for letting us uh, get behind the scenes with you uh, for watching today. If you have any questions at home you'd like to ask uh, Philip or any of the musicians in the future, please put your comments below or email me um, at the info at cpo.org.za. And to keep up to date with the orchestra, you'll also find their website details coming up at the end of this video. Join me again soon for another behind the scenes catch up with the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra. Thank you, Philip. Thank you.